In this lecture, we're going to talk about the basics of web scraping. We're not going to write any code here. We're just going to look at what it is, how it works, and what the initial analysis process is before you jump into the coding. So the general idea behind web scraping is that you can take a formatted or semi-formatted web page like this one from the directory at the iSchool at Maryland. Uh, you can highlight the fields that you're interested in, and then you write some code that extracts those off the web page into a database or a local file. So the idea here is that we're just extracting information from the web. We're going to store it. And that could be in a text file, it could be in a database, could be in a spreadsheet, whatever format you like. This often involves extracting links from web pages, following those links, and checking the formatting on those pages. And we're going to go through an example that will show that working. The data that you're going to extract may be formatted, like you may have a CSV file or something in XML format, uh, or unformatted, like just HTML pages. The example we just looked at and that we'll dig into more deeply in this video is sort of semi-formatted. It's in HTML, not JSON or XML or a CSV, but it is consistently formatted across pages. A big challenge that you face is recognizing what that format is and then how might you recognize enough patterns so that you can extract the data. So let's go into an example to sort of see how this works first. We're going to scrape the iSchool directory, sort of. We're not actually going to write the code here. We're just going to look at what that directory looks like, what the links are like, how we might follow those and compile a list of links to follow, and then what information we'll actually extract from the page, like that example we looked at uh, at the beginning of the video. Before we jump in, I just want to talk through the process first. We're going to start by looking at the page just as a human who understands things. There's no, you know, fancy code looking at the page. You're just going to look at it, decide what information you want to extract, see how that's embedded in each page's code, and then check if you need to scrape multiple pages, which in this case we will and is really common for this. Here we are exploring the College of Information Studies directory page. So the first step we're going to do in web scraping is just to go through look at the page, see what the formatting looks like, uh, and figure out what kind of information we want to get. So if we scroll down here, we can see that we have each person in the college. They have a photo, their name, and then their title underneath the photo. Um, if we click on one of those names, it takes us to a page with more information. And so the first question we want to ask is, how much information do we want or do we need for our project? If we say, well, we want to get names and titles, but also email and phone number, that means we have to come to the page for each person. And that's fine. That's totally something we can do. Um, we then would want to check out multiple people and see what they look like. So again, we have email and phone number on the page. If we click here, email and phone number. So this gives us something that's pretty nice. We have a consistent formatting across pages. And in fact, all the information we need is in the correct order on each person's individual page. We have their name, their title, their email, and their phone number. And part of this initial process is just to go through, we'll click on a few people, make sure that formatting is consistent, which it is. So that means we've chosen the information that we want. We're going to take the things off each profile page and uh, we know that it's formatted in a consistent way. So what are we going to have to extract in order to do that? Well, there's at least two things so far. We are going to have to, from this page, get a link to each person's individual profile. And that link is here in the name. And then once we get to each profile page, we're going to need to extract the name, title, email, and phone number. Is that the only thing we need to extract? Um, not exactly, because once we get down here to the bottom of the page, we can see that there are numbered pages. We've only seen through last name B, and so we click on page two, and then we're going to get another set of people. Uh, we'll repeat the process on this page, but that means we're going to have to compile three things. A list of links to each page in the directory, and then from each page, we'll extract links to each person's profile. And then from each profile page, we'll extract the actual information that we want. OK, so let's start with these directory pages. From there, we're going to be extracting links at the bottom to 
all of the directory pages and then eventually we'll look at extracting the profile names. So one of the questions is, are all the pages listed down here? Because there's a dot, dot, dot. Um, and in, certainly in some formats, that means there's a page seven, eight, nine potentially, but we're only gonna show a few here. So that means we may need to go through each page individually in order to determine when we're done. So we could click on six here and see if that's the end. And it's not, you can see now we have a seven and an eight. Okay, so we could start on page one and then extract the link to page two, extract the link to page three and so on. But a common step that we might take is to actually look at the URL. So I'm gonna copy that from the top of the page up here and then bring that over to a text editor. Okay, so let's paste that in. And of course that's a little hard to read right now. Um, so we'll just go through and replace all of the ampersands with a new line. This isn't a thing that you need to know how to do. Um, it's just making it a little quicker. So now we can see all the things that were in the URL. And what we can see here is at the end, page equals five. So there's a page number at the end. So that's great. That's gonna be really useful for us because it means instead of having to extract a link to the pages from the bottom here, we can just replace the end of that URL. Now, it looks like there's only eight pages, so what happens if we were to put like 10? Okay, so nothing is on the page. This is actually great because that means we can just start at one and go through every page, and once we get a page that says, sorry, no person matches current filter criteria, or if we just don't see any links to people's profile pages, then we know we've reached the end. So that saves us from having to extract the link to the next page from the bottom here, though that is something that we could do. And I'll, we'll take a look at that once we jump into the code. Um, but it's always good to look for these kinds of shortcuts where you don't have to extract something from the code. You can just put it in the URL so you can fetch each page. And then you know, once you try to extract links to profile pages, if there aren't any, then you can stop. All right, so let's come back here just to one of the pages that's actually populated. Now, we're able to go through each page in the directory. So the next thing that we want to think about is how do we extract the links to people's profiles uh, from the directory pages. So for this, we're going to have to look at the code. Um, so I just did view source. That's command U or control U is often a shortcut for that. And so this is going to show us the HTML for the page. You don't need to know HTML to do this. You just need to sort of know the basic format that we have tags and that your content is in there. And so you can see here, we've got links to each of the letters. That's what we could see at the top of the page. So if we flip back, here's all the letters. This is the code to show that. So that's good. We kind of know where we are in the page. And here, even without reading this, you can see that we've got something that's formatted consistently over and over and over again. We've got the same lines repeating with just a little bit of different content. And if we read through those, we see that we've got a link to somebody's name. We've got their actual name down here. Um, we've got a link to a picture. So this is for Professor Elmquist. If we click on that, we see his photo. And so what we discovered here is what the content looks like to link to each person's page. And, uh, and in fact, this here is the link to a person's uh, profile page. So if we were to click to follow that link, we'd get there. But this is not a complete link, right? We don't have an HTTP at the beginning. It's a relative link. And so basically what this means is that we're going to start uh, in the iSchool uh, domain and then add this on to the end. And if we're unsure about what that looks like, we can always come back here and let's click on a person's name. All right, we'll wait while that's coming up. Um, but you can also look down here at the bottom and you can see it's iSchool.umd.edu slash about, here we go, slash about slash directory slash the person's name. If we look back at the code, you can see we have slash about slash directory slash the person's name. So we know this formatting is gonna match what we have in the URL here. So we basically put http iSchool.umd.edu ahead of what's showing up in the code here. 
and that's going to give us the link to each person's page. So the first step you would do in web scraping after you've done this analysis is to write some code that's going to go through each directory page. So it'll start on page one, which we know how to do from looking at uh, the URL, which we saw over here. We'll start with page equals one. We'll then go into that page source, retrieve this HTML, and then look for links that have this slash about slash directory. We'll extract that and we're going to see how to do that. And then we're going to basically add that URL with the iSchool.umd.edu to a list of URLs that we have to examine. And I would go through every page in order until we get to a page like page nine where there aren't any people. And then once we see we've added no new URLs, then we can stop going through the pages. So we'd put some code in there to know when we've finally gone past where there's any content. That then would give us a list of URLs to pages that look like this for everyone in the college. And then we would go one by one through those URLs, come to them and extract the data from the page. So now we repeat the same process here. We're on this page and we know the information we want to get, the name, the title, the email address, and the phone number. And so we're going to look at the source code for this page and see where that shows up. So we'll pull up the source code and then I am going to put in Alison Druin's name because we know that's going to show up in the text that we want to extract. So here it is in the title of the page. That's the stuff that shows up in the tab here. So that's not it. Okay. So here we have her name again, but then there's some stuff after that. So we may jump down. That may be something higher in the page. It's always good to just sort of scroll through and look. Uh, this looks like it's referring to an image, so we'll continue down. Okay, and now we can actually see if we look down here, here's all of the information. So we have the name, the title, the email address, and the phone number. And this is all formatted in a nice, neat way. We would want to go through and look at other pages to make sure that formatting is consistent. Um, so let's, let's do that really quick. Okay, we'll view the source for this and search for her name. Actually, we can just scroll down to where we find that. Okay, and so here we see, again, name, title, email address, phone number, and this formatting, we can look, we've got a span with a class and some information and then some divs down here. That looks just like what we have for Alice and Drew in here. So now we know once we're on a profile page, we're going to look for basically a HTML tag with attributes that looks like this, followed by these items here. And then the content we want is going to be in between those tags in each, in each place here and then up here. So then uh, coming into this, we will have written code that's going to extract the URLs to each profile page. We've now analyzed each profile page, so our code would pull up each one of those and then find these tags that contain the information, extract that, and then save it some way. You could put it into a database, you could write it out to a text file like a CSV or a tab delimited file, um, but store it in some way so you have the information. So that's the process. Uh, what we're going to do next in the following videos is actually look at the code to do that, but that gives you an overview of uh, what you should expect when you're creating the initial thoughts of how to do web scraping. Okay, so now that we've gone through this, hopefully this process makes a little bit more sense. We're going to look at these pages. In this case, we looked at the main directory page, we looked at the links that took you between pages, and we looked at each individual profile page. We decided what information we wanted to extract, in this case, name, title, email, and phone number. We looked into the HTML code both for the directory pages and for the individual profile pages to see how the information we needed was embedded in the code. In this case, that was we knew the data that we wanted was on profile pages, and so we looked on the directory pages to see where we could find a link to each profile page and how we might extract that. 
And then on each individual profile page, we looked at how the information that would go into our database was represented in that code in a sort of formatted way so we could write the code to then extract that and save it. Uh, we also checked to see how to scrape multiple pages. So in this case, we could have extracted links to the next page from the bottom of each directory page, but we also saw a really common trick that's used, which is that the URL often embeds some kind of code with the page number, and you can find something on a page once you've run out of data to indicate that. And so instead of having to extract that URL, you may be able to avoid that by using a code within the URL like a number. And so uh, in this case, we were able to do that. Sometimes you won't be able to do that and you'll have to find that next link at the bottom of each page. But it showed us how we could go through each directory page. And then we also saw how to extract links to each individual profile page from those directory pages that we could then put into some kind of data structure that we would loop through eventually. So scraping the web uh, can be really effective. There are some risks to talk about. From a programmatic perspective, one is that small changes in page formatting can break a scraper. When you're looking at something like HTML to extract, then if someone adds in a new tag or formats the page a little bit differently, changes the names of some style sheets that they're using, if that's part of your code to recognize what information to extract, and it changes, then your scraper can break. So really small changes can make you have to continually go back and revise these scrapers. That's really their main weakness over using something like an API that will return the data to you in a reliable, formatted, documented way. You also can run into the situation where slight variations between pages may make your code much more complex. So you could think of scraping something like people's signature blocks from their emails. Those are kind of consistent in their formatting. They tend to have a name, an email address, a title, and a phone number, but the order is different. Um, they may be presented with different kinds of punctuation. So I may have commas, or like in my phone number, I may have dots versus dashes. I may have parentheses. And so if we've got things that are entered by hand, even if they're supposed to follow a consistent format, there may be some slight variations. And that means that our code needs to accommodate all those variations. And depending on how much they change, that can make our code much more complex. One other thing to think about that I didn't list here is that uh, when you're crawling a lot of pages, so if you're following many links, and extracting data. This could very well violate the terms of service of the page that you're scraping. Lots of pages have it in their terms of service that you can't just automatically collect data off of them. Um, and if you try to do it anyway, it's often pretty easy for them to recognize that something automated is hitting pages very quickly over and over and over again. It doesn't look like a human um, and they could block your IP address or somehow stop your script from accessing their data. And so that's sort of a separate risk than the actual code that you might write, which is what this slide is talking about. Um, but it's worth thinking about that as you're extracting data. Are you violating the terms of service? Are you abusing the website? Uh, what are the consequences if you do that? So with that, we're gonna now jump into the steps that you need to actually write Python code to do web scraping on your own.